welcome to Quadratics 5.3 Complex Numbers. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to continue using imaginary numbers, and we're going to create something that is called a complex number, where it's a combination of a regular number, a real number, and an imaginary number. Okay, so we're going to do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. I'm sorry, not dividing, actually. Adding, subtracting, and multiplying of complex numbers in this, in this lesson. Okay. And you're going to see that, that for the most part, it's not going to be that bad. It's going to be pretty similar to what you guys have been doing in, in other lessons that deal with variables. And the similarities are going to be kind of kind of, kind of similar. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see what we have to do in our first problem. So we have 4 minus 6i plus negative 3 plus 2i. Okay. So we're just going to rewrite this problem without the parentheses. And that's kind of key because once you see this, this problem without the parentheses, you can see what the true sign that is, a, that is attached to some of these numbers are going to be. So um, there's no sign in front of this, this parentheses in front of 4 minus 6i. So I can just write 4 minus 6i with no changes. Okay. The other parentheses, negative 3 plus 2i, he has a positive sign on the outside of him. So he's not going to change in appearance as well. He's just going to be negative 3 plus 2i. Okay. All right, so then we're going to combine like terms. So we're going to combine the regular numbers or real numbers, if you want to call them that, and the imaginary numbers. That'll be negative 6i plus 2i. So 4 minus 3, that's going to make a 1. The negative 6i plus 2i, that's going to make negative 4i. So we're just going to combine like terms, something that you guys have been doing for a while. So hopefully this is not something that is out of the ordinary. Okay. All right, so let's look at the next one. Can I erase the parentheses in letter B just like I did in letter A? Well, we just have to check to see what's on the outside. So negative 4 minus 8i, there's nothing outside of him that's going to change the appearance of negative 4 and negative 8i. So I'm just going to rewrite negative 4 and negative 8i unchanged. Okay, what about the other parentheses? Negative 3 plus 5i, is there anything outside of them? that's going to change their appearance. And all they have on the outside of them is a positive sign, so no change again. So negative 3 plus 5i, no change. Okay, then I'm going to combine like terms. Negative 4, negative 3 make negative 7. Negative 8i, positive 5i, that's going to make negative 3i. Okay. All right, let's look at letter C. Okay, so they're going to change things up. Now we're going to subtract complex numbers. So we're still going to do the exact same first step that we're going to try to get rid of parentheses. So 7 minus 11i, is there anything outside of their parentheses that's going to change their appearance? And the answer is no, because there's nothing. So it's just going to stay as 7 minus 11i. Okay, the next parentheses is going to be a little different from the first two problems. 4 plus 2i does have something outside that's going to change their appearance. and It's the negative sign. So this negative sign is going to distribute. It's going to give itself to the 4, and it's going to give itself to the positive 2i. And when it does that, it's going to make negative 4 and negative 2i. Okay, so if you don't do that step of distribution with the negative sign going to 4 and 2i, you're going to get the wrong signs with those numbers. And if you get the wrong signs with those numbers, you're going to get the wrong answer. So be super careful. Okay, so 7 minus 4, that's going to make 3. Negative 11i minus 2i, that makes negative 13i. Okay, all right, so next problem. We see a negative sign outside one of the parentheses, so we gotta be super careful again. So nothing outside the 5 minus 6i parentheses, so it's just gonna stay the same. The other parentheses, the negative sign is gonna distribute and it's gonna change the appearance of the numbers that are on the inside. So negative 3 turns to positive 3. Negative 8i turns to positive 8i. So be super careful about that. Okay, so let's combine like terms. 5 plus 3 is 8. Negative 6i plus 8i is positive 2i. Okay, so pretty straightforward, these four problems. Yeah, just practice them and you'll get the hang of it. Yeah, just make sure you watch out for those negative signs because they're going to be tricky. Okay, so let's see what they have next. Okay, so now we're going to start multiplying complex numbers. Okay, and if, if, well, I didn't really explain what a complex number is. Well, maybe I did, but not really in, in detail. Okay, so a complex number is going to be, like I said earlier, it's a combination of a real number. So in this case, if you look at 1 plus 3i, 1 is your real number. Okay, so a complex number is a combination of a real number and an imaginary number. 
and 3i is your imaginary number. So the two of them combined together, 1 plus 3i, they form what is called a complex number. Okay, so 7 minus 5i, that's also a complex number because it has a real number and an imaginary number combined together. Yeah, so 7 minus 5i, that's a complex number. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like a mix, a mixed number. Yeah, when you guys deal with mixed numbers back in elementary school, you learned that a mixed number is a combination of a real number, or a whole number rather, and a fraction. Yeah, and they call it a mixed number. It's a combination of a, a whole number and a fraction. So a complex number is a combination of a real number and an imaginary number. Okay, so kind of the same concept. All right, so in this one, we're going to distribute. We're going to go everything in one parenthesis times everything in the other. So 1 times 7, 1 times negative 5i. 3i times 7, 3i times negative 5i. So when I showed you guys foiling back in a previous lesson last quarter, I think I wrote it out like this. So I did 1 times 7, and then I did 1 times negative 5i. And then I did 3i times 7, and 3i times negative 5i. Okay, I wrote it out just like this. I know it's a lot of writing, but for some of you guys, uh, when I saw your homework and I checked it, um, you guys kind of did the same thing. So I think you kind of liked it. it. It made sense organizationally, yeah? Okay, so 1 times 7, that's 7. 1 times negative 5i, that's negative 5i. And 3i times 7, well, that's guarantee a positive, because a positive times a positive is a positive answer. 3 times 7 is 21. And since i is your only letter, it's just going to stay i. Okay, and the last one, sine is going to be negative. 3 times 5 is 15. i times i is i squared. And here's where it's going to get tricky. Okay, you got to remember this i squared here. Do you remember your conversion? That's why I wrote it on the top of this slide, right in the top, right in the middle. Because you need to remember, you're required by law, math law, that whenever you see a i squared, you change it into a negative one. And if you don't do that, then your answer is going to be super wrong. Okay? So, when this i squared changes into negative one, we basically have negative 15 times negative one which eventually makes positive 15. Okay, so why is that important? Well, because I'm trying to gather together, yeah, or gather up the, the like terms. So these guys are like terms because they have the exact same letter. They have the regular I attached to it. Yeah, and previous to this little I squared change thing, 7 and negative 15 I squared, they were not like terms because 7 didn't have an I squared attached to it. But because I squared switched to negative 1, and because that negative 1 changed negative 15 into positive 15, 15 is now a regular number, just like 7 is a regular number. So these guys are now like terms, and they can be combined. So when I combine 7 and 15, I get 22. When I combine negative 5i and positive 21i, I get positive 16i. Okay, so be very careful. That I squared is going to make a lot of headaches happen, a lot of careless mistakes happen if you don't watch out for it. So be super aware of it. Okay, all right, so let's do our next one. So 2 times 3, 2 times negative 2i. Negative 4i times 3, negative 4i times negative 2i. So let's do this. So 2 times 3 and 2 times negative 2i. And negative 4i times 3 and negative 4i times negative 2i. Okay, so let's see what we get. So this makes 6, this makes negative 4i, this makes negative 12i, and this makes positive 8i squared. Okay, which is going to convert into 8 times negative 1, which converts into negative 8. Okay, so be aware of all those changes because of that i squared. Okay, so let's look for like terms. These guys are like terms because they both have regular plain old i. These guys are like terms because they're my regular numbers. Okay, so in this problem, I'm going to actually make a mistake on purpose. Yeah, 
And I'm not going to make a mistake combining the terms, right? Because 6 and negative 8, they're going to make negative 2. And negative 4i, negative 12i, they're going to make negative 16i. Okay, but I, I made a mistake on purpose when I wrote my answer on the bottom. Okay. Complex numbers, you have to write them in a certain order. Yeah. And the order that I wrote this, this answer in is wrong because I wrote the imaginary number first, the real number second. I'm not allowed to do that. That is against the law. Okay. And if you're wondering why, what's the big deal? Let me put it to you in this perspective. Okay. If you were to write the, the mixed number three and a half, is this how you write three and a half? Oops. <laughs> I'm saying three and a half, so I write a three in the bottom of the fraction. I'm supposed to write a I'm supposed to write a two. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, my computer was lagging. And I was moving the eraser, but it wasn't moving the it wasn't erasing things. So if I wrote three and a half like this, would that be correct? Is that the right way to write three and a half? Is the order of the three and the one half correct? No, that is definitely wrong. You cannot write the three in the back and say that's called three and a half. Yeah, people are going to be like, what's that? Yeah, just the same thing as this. It just doesn't look as bad as the example I gave up here in red. Okay, so eventually you'll, you'll understand that when you see a complex number written correctly, you're going to know that it's supposed to be written as real number first, imaginary number second. And if you don't write it that way, I'll mark you off just to remind you. Okay, so you're like, wow, that's kind of mean. You kind of said like you're, you're glad to do it. I'm not glad to do it, but sometimes when you see a mistake, yeah, then that's when it, when it, when it occurs to you, okay, I better, I better take note of it because if I keep on doing it this way, then I'm going to keep on getting it marked wrong every single time. Yeah, so yeah, please make sure real number first, imaginary number second. Okay, all right, so let's do some more. All right, so I'm not going to draw the rainbows because, uh, yeah, eventually you guys hopefully can do it without the little rainbows. So 1 times 3, 1 times negative 6i. And eventually you can probably hopefully do this without even doing the steps that I'm doing now, where I'm writing everything out. You'll do all these computations in your head. And if you can do that, that's fine. If you can't, then don't worry. Yeah, it's not a requirement. Yeah. But if you can't start doing it, then that's good because then you're going to get faster. Okay, so... Let's see what we get when we multiply everything out. We're going to get a 3 for the first guy. We're going to get negative 6i for the next one. We're going to get 12i for the next one. And we're going to get negative 24, oops, didn't write the negative, negative 24i squared for the last guy. Okay, which then turns into negative 24 times negative 1, which becomes negative 24. Okay, so my like terms. These guys are like terms. These guys are like terms. So my answer is going to be negative 21 um, plus 6i. And there you go. Okay, let's look at D. So 3 times 4. And then I get 3 times 6i. And then I get negative 5i times 4. And then I get negative 5i times 6i. Okay, so this is 12. This is 18i. This is negative 20i. And this is negative 30i squared, which then turns into negative 30 times negative 1, which eventually becomes positive 30. Okay. So these guys are like terms, and these guys are like terms. So I get 42 for my real number, and I get negative 2i for my imaginary number. Okay? All right. Moving on. And like I said, like I said in previous videos, if I go too fast, just, just stop and rewind. Yeah? Okay, so last two problems, I believe. So 1 times negative 1. Then I got 1 times 4i. Then I got 2i times negative 1. And I got 2i times 4i. Okay, so this is negative 1. This is 4i. This is negative 2i. And this is 8i squared, which becomes 8 times negative 1 
which becomes negative 8. Okay, so like terms, like terms. So I get negative 9 for my real number. I get positive 2i for my imaginary. Okay. All right, last one. So 7 times negative 2, 7 times negative 8i, negative 3i times negative 2, and negative 3i times negative 8i. Okay, so that's negative 14. This is negative 56i. This is positive 6i. And this is positive 24i squared, which becomes 24 times negative 1, which becomes negative 24. Okay, so my like terms, my regular numbers here, these guys are like terms, they're my letters or imaginary numbers. Okay, so negative 14, negative 24, that's negative 38. Uh, negative 56i, positive 6i, that's negative 50i. And there you go. All done. Okay, so I hope you understood this video. I know I kind of went fast at the end, but it's, it's based off of foiling, which I know you guys know. Yeah. Only thing you want to remember is the i squared, which turns into negative 1. Okay. All right, so I'll see you in class, and yeah, good luck on this assignment. Bye-bye.